Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. I've been missing for a little while. Um, this episode will probably show why. Um, I had a little job come up for work which involved machining and the title of this video, a large part on a small mill, um, pretty much will become self-evident as I go through the footage. Now I couldn't record everything in detail because I'm basically working from home and I'm on the clock with work. Um, so basically I just let the camera run, moved it about now and again, pulled out a few clips and that's made this episode. So yeah, it was an interesting job um, with the tooling I had to make a component of this size. Um, but yeah, and I can't tell you what it is, but uh, there's lots and lots and lots of milling work in it. So I'll show you that. Anyway, enjoy guys. So, big piece of steel, small milling machine. Um, it's only 6 mil thick by 200 wide, but it's 1.2 metres long. Um, it does fit on my table. I'll bring you over and show you the setup. And I need to machine the width of it to 164 mil. And I've got a tolerance of about, well, maybe half a mil. So I'm going to have to do it in sections. That's about as much as I can do. And move it along and match up the cut. So I've got my DRO set on width. I've got a pair of slip gauges. Now these are knockers. They're not my decent slip gauge set, but they're random slip gauges that I've got lying about. And I've found two little stacks. That stack fits in that T-slot, and that stack fits in that T-slot, and it's just the other side of the clamp. Now I can't get clamps on the far side. Well, I could get one here, I suppose, for the first cut. But as I slide the, the the um, material along I've got to use two clamps on here so yeah I, this is the second one of these I've done and so far so good so basically I'm running a cut along as far as I can half a mil off finish size um, I'm taking three and a half mil on the first cut then dropping down to six and a half it's six mil thick and doing the second cut which is where I am now Quite a racket. As they say, quite a racket, guys. Uh, it does stop chattering, but I'm uh, pushing it a bit here. So two cuts, then step over. stepped over now the 0.5 millimeters to my finished size and that will leave this section of the plate finished size ready for me to move on and do the next cut so with the first cut complete I can loosen off the two clamps I've had a quick clean up make sure there's no uh, dirt and swarf in the uh, areas on the end of the table where I'm sliding but I can slide my plate along now I've got the cutter up out of the way of the part come to just before I finish that cut pull the plate back against the two stops nip the two clamps just pulling it back hard against the, uh, the little gauge blocks that are in I've got I mean I could make up a set of tenons for this table I suppose would be a better idea but I'm not worried about these slip gauges. Okay, so we moved along the next section. We're back against the same register for straightness. Um, as I did say, we've got a tolerance of half a mil on the width. So if there is a slight indiscrepancy, not a problem. And I did draw file along the edge of this plate. Um, it's bright mild steel, but you do get little lumps and bumps on delivery. So I've draw filed along the edge just to take any lumps and bumps out so I'm not picking up on any high spots. Um, yeah, so that's that really. So fire the cutter up again. Go into my depth. Let's just turn the feed on. Bit of loop. That's the 
the first pass done at two and a half mil deep. Um, I'll probably do another one now at two mil deep, another two mil deeper again, take me to four and a half. It's actually quarter plate, I think I said it was six mil. Um, and then just do the final cut, then do the step over and finish size this bit. Then I think we're going to have to flip the whole part upside down and do the same procedure from the other end. Because um, basically my workbench isn't long enough in this direction to send it out without clearing a load of stuff off the workbench. So yeah, just making life easy for myself. Just blending in now, I've moved over and I'm going to do that face to the same dimension as this face uh, on the two hips. And I have put, if you look at the end here, I've wedged the tapered handle of one of my swarf brushes in between the two halves just to keep this back face out as it was closing in a little bit. So yeah, that's just keeping it out away from the cutter so the cutter's only machining this face of the, of the job as it were, not the piece of scrap. So just getting to the end of that slot. There we are. Bring the cutter out. And I'll just go back the other way. Back to my start point. And we'll give this uh, plate and the table all a good clean up. Take the job off and flip it over. Just make sure we've got no odd bits of swarf laying around. There we are. Uh, so, yeah. No need to have a cutter running. I don't know whether I've mentioned I'm actually cutting off the edge of the table so when I pass through obviously I'm not bumping into anything um, I'm completely off the edge of the table so bear with me should come to my stop there we are turn the feed off so we can loosen the clamps off now I'll give the table a clean down when I got the clamps off there's the other two slip blocks let's pull that clamp out same with the one this end, pull the clamp out of the way, just checking that the, uh, the part is balanced on the table. When I do the first cut, all the weight is hanging out the end and it won't actually rest there. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn the camera off, move the camera and take the complete part off this end of the table and flip it end for end, 180, so I can start cutting at the... Uh, uncut end you'll see that in a sec a bit more obvious now i am cutting off the end of the table completely off the end and over the back of the dro somewhere above the guard here um so yeah just get rid of the the swarf make sure we're putting the part down on a clean surface okay i'm not going to clean the entire mill down because i'm going to be doing a lot more machining but as long as my work surface is clear we can have a great big clean up at the end. And pull the slip gauges out. Pop them back in again. Okay, so I'll clean the underside of the part down and we'll put the part back on the table as well. There's the other set of slip gauges that just fit in there. These ones are a little tighter and these ones just fit in. Okay, so just lifted the part down on upside down. Pull it back against those uh, gauge blocks. Right, it will just balance there. I'll put my little clamp back in just for security. Come on, get the teen up back in the slot. Just nip that one on there. I've got to pop those out to put the clamp in. There we go. Piece of packing under the tail. Put the box back in. Okay. 
pull the part back against, make sure my clamps are loose, pull the part back against the gauge blocks, nip those two bolts. Tighten up and away to go again. Just get in the last little bit, you can probably hear me a lot better now. So 50mm area in the centre here. Um, it was exactly the same on the other one. Couldn't quite do it in three hits. So the next little job to do is square the end up. So if I just in fact oops lost my clamp. I'm just going to use a square. Let me just double check that off the table. I can live with that. Tighten up the two clamps. And I'll just run a cutter across that edge and square it up. These were cut from a single length. Um, with a slitting, uh, slitting wheel on a grinder. So, let's just get a touch. Okay. There is uh, an overall length of 11.50 when it's finished, but there is a shape to go on one end. I'll do the shaped end first and then clean the other end up to size. Okay, let's see how we get on with that. So, I've just chopped this corner off as you can see. I marked out the plate to dimensions that I've got on a drawing um, and that's, yeah, pretty much on finished size. Um, because I've got this plate set up at the angle, what I've done, I've clamped it down here and here, which is more than rigid enough what I'm doing. I've set an end stop clamp down here on the end and a stop on the side here. So if I flip it over 180 degrees this way, I should be able to machine to the same reading and I get the equal angle because it is equal about. So it just saves setting up, clocking up, that sort of idea. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I can simply undo the clamp here. Um, I'm going to have to move the camera. Bear with me two seconds. So that's the one clamp off. If I just loosen the other one off now, I've got to hold on to the other end of the plate because it's hanging out uh, off the table. So I can flip that. Just bring it in very gently. I've got a bit of dirt in there. Against this long parallel here to give me my... Hold on, let's just get a bit of a security here. Okay, so I'll just jiggle it around. And up against that stop. Parallel to this stop. I can put this clamp back on properly now. Yep. Just looking at both of the stops, it looks good. Lock that clamp down. Set this rear clamp up properly now. It was very temporarily put on there. Okay. Okay. So there we are, we're clamped in position. So I'm gonna come in Y. I'm just going to back off 0.1 mil, wind back up, it's perhaps a 1 mil cut. I've changed to a carbide cutter now, 
start the cutter up. Oop, too much acceleration on the feed then for a second. And that's it. Chop the other side off. So I need to do it to overall length now. So I've marked it out. Uh, 11.51 is my overall length. So I've basically, uh, 11.50 sorry. So I've basically marked the line 11.51 and I'm gonna do exactly the same as we did before. Go back and forth and then when I'm done and cut the piece off the end, I'll drop in or move in in wide the one mil to give my final size um, I can't set a stop on this one so the other one I'll have to set up and scribe the line again I got four of these lengths of six mil plate now um, all machined down to 64 mil thick up to this point um, I could get three hits as I was doing it as you saw in the previous clip um, and without moving on but that's far enough um, so yeah I've set my cutter half a mil oh hang on a minute half a mil oversize um, so I just chop this off stepping down a mil at a time and then move the part over half a mil and face the end of the parts to length and I've already faced the other ends just to clean up so last cut Step over the half mil. We'll finish with a climb cut. So I need two pieces of stock now. This is 30 mil by six. Um, it's at the off cut that I cut off the big plates earlier on. I've cut the first one off 80 mil. Um, oversize I'm leaving. I make a couple, you know, 82, something like that. So yeah, exactly the same operation. So all these bits and pieces I've been making basically make this. Uh, it's going to be a welded construction. I'll do all the weld preps with uh, basically with a grinder. Um, you know, all the fillets for welding. Um, probably won't need one in areas like this. Um, but yeah, it all goes together. These spacers actually go flush to the top here. And this particular one will be welded, um, overlap welded onto the end of here. Another one up the other end, as you can see. So it's 11.50 long altogether. I think it's uh, 
let's say a six inch wide and yeah it's about 60 mil this way um, but so I've got two of these and that's what we've been making um, there is one other part which is this here uh, it's just a flat plate which goes on the underside at the far end so I wouldn't be able to show you that but each one of them's got one of those on as well uh, clearance hole for 10 mil bolts um, so yeah that's what this has been I can't say what it's for um, it's a job for work and I haven't been able to film it in detail because I've needed to get on and do it because I was on works time but I just let the camera roll in the background and as you've seen from the clips of this I just you know edited down some clips and whenever I had a cut on or doing something else I'd have a yabber but yeah um, big part um, you know the, the big plate and the two long plates on a small mill